I've always been really interested in music. And I was brought up in an age where physical music was dying. So I've always had this desire to own physical music. So I got into collecting vinyl. I set off to talk to people on how we've listened to music over time and the rapid progression of music accessibility and what that does for music in general. Music. It's the stuff of life, right? What you buy, in a sense, reveals a lot about what you care about. The music used to be this experience that was very temporal, you know? Now music's more like art in a museum. I mean, music in the 1700s, only the rich people could listen to a certain kind, classical. The poor people were stuck with peasant music, you know? Yeah, da, 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 da. Obviously, what really changed the music game was the radio. In the 1940s, before, 30s and 40s, before vinyl, uh, when everything was on 78s. Musicians who traveled in big bands, somebody in the band would be, basically be the assigned the guy to carry a box of records so that at night they could sit and listen to whoever they really loved. And the LP was invented in 48. Microgroove was invented in 48, so it was the LP and the 45 came along around the same time. One thing about the LP is it's a 12-inch cover, and every major graphic artist of the 20th century did design on LPs. Once it got into the 60s, people, you know, they made the artwork have something to do with the music inside. I, th I think people like the idea of looking at a record. If you clean them, if you take care of them, they play as well now as they ever did. Yeah, I like the idea of listening to a whole album from beginning to finish as opposed to putting one song from an album on a playlist which is a bunch of different albums in a bunch of different genres. One side is 20 to 25 minutes and it's perfect. I mean you focus on every measure of it. Like I really think we've lost listening to music from beginning to end of an album with streaming. Great albums were works of art. And I think we saw this year more than like any other year the power of like a whole album captivating people. But if you have a halfway decent system or speakers it's a good it's a more engaging experience. A little tiny file, you lose a lot of information. ECM, which is one of the great modern jazz labels, will not allow their music on iTunes. It's because the guy who created the label, Manfred Eicher, spent years and years and years creating this perfect sound, and iTunes cannot recreate that sound. I really like the community of people who buy records. It's no fun shopping on Amazon. You go to Amazon if you know what you want to buy. The record business should be careful that they don't bite the hand that's feeding them, yeah, yeah. you know. They would sell more vinyl if it was 10 or $15. The LP represented the height of uh, audio fidelity. You might think it's just a disc, all right? Only a little, like a little it's, it's kind of thin. It's not very big. But this has every single song I've ever listened to on it. There's a lot of that idea of, of the CD being a vehicle that is a storage item. And that also devalues the music and leads to people just sampling or just buying one track. I also believe that CDs sound pretty good and reissue CDs now. In the early days of CDs, you weren't actually sure that they were going to sound better than a record. Nobody really understands, except engineers and technicians, how a CD works. I don't think anybody can really tell the difference between a really well digital, digitalized recording. Nobody wants to design for a, a, a three-inch, five-inch uh, CD. There's nothing to look at in an MP3. I do not think that anybody will regard old CDs, uh, with very few exceptions, as being as immutable as the great LPs. Spotify or streaming is, it's coming and as they say, the genie's out of the bottle. It's not gonna go really back in. Overall streaming music exposes people to more types of music than they normally would have been previously been able to do. I think it affects the integrity of the music world. I feel like it almost devalues music a little bit. You know, the fact that we have so much of it at our fingertips. The biggest problem with the streaming services, which is that they pay hardly anything. Yeah, I think it makes music feel less intimate and less precious. Because the other day, you know, I listened to one song 20 times, but, you know, I feel like that's not what music is for. It also really disconnects you from the world around you. As a musician or an artist, you can make a record on your computer. Yeah. The DIY part of music 
will continue to persist and continue to give people the building blocks to do more professional things. The only reason why my music is where it is today is because of social media. Bandcamp, I think, is a really cool streaming website because it's a way for someone to put a record out on their iPhone from their room. Social media and its interactions with music shouldn't be undermined. I just think all these old people, they'd be like, oh, electronic music. I don't know what that means. And I feel like a fair point, because I don't know what it means either, but maybe if you think about it, in a hundred years, electronic music is going to be in Carnegie Hall, and, you know, the new kids will be listening to, like, sonic waves. I feel like my mind can't grasp what we can do beyond streaming. Sure, we'll get to a point where, like, there's something in our brain and we can just, like, think of a song. So, through my interviews, I came to the conclusion that CDs are pretty much dead and useless. Nobody in my age group or young people really know what an 8-track is. Vinyl collecting is a niche, and it's not really realistic in today's music world and pretty much everybody is streaming that's just the norm the way we listen to music is ever changing it's always going to be updated and getting better so who knows how things are going to be like in 10 or 15 years we just have to be prepared for this change